Hello everybody and Happy New Year. Yes, I'm still alive. <laughs> then uh, I, I know it's been a little bit of an absence here, but uh, yeah, I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, so let me tell you what I've been doing here. It's been keeping me off of here for the last uh, several weeks. Uh, actually, I got some sad news. Unfortunately, I lost uh, lost my cat Fuelen. Uh just just before the New Year. Uh, like two days, Saturday, he uh, he ended up uh, passing away. So, back in November, he got uh, uh, the sad diagnosis of uh, stage four kidney failure. Uh, he, I noticed he had stopped eating so very well, and brought him to the vets. They did a blood workup, and the day before Thanksgiving, I got the phone call for the blood results that he had stage four kidney failure. And so between taking care of him, the normal holiday stuff, and plus an uptick in my amount of work I had, December was a really busy month for me. And with with the issues going on with Waylon, with him not feeling well and that, uh, I just had a hard time being creative. And he was going downhill pretty quickly on me. And... I just didn't feel like edit, sitting down to edit the videos. I have two more trips that uh, I still haven't edited out yet and uh, put up here, but we're going to get those done uh, pretty uh, soon. Right, I mean, right after this video. If right after you see that one, this one, I'm going to start editing those. So hopefully we can get back into the swing of things on that. But uh, but yeah, I figured uh give you a quick update and uh, also spend a few minutes talking about Foylan. He, uh, <laughs> he was a special cat. I was bonded pretty close to him and uh, kind of took it hard. So, but he's uh, he's got an interesting story though, and uh, I know this is a, a deviation from my travel vlogs type stuff. And as you can see, I'm in the van now. I'm traveling. It's it's June. No, excuse me, January, <laughs> not June, January third, and I am back at Hancock Campground in Lincoln, New Hampshire. I uh, actually just had to get out of the house for a couple of days, and things are behind me now. So. And we're having a, a, a stretch of okay weather. There's not a lot of snow on the ground right now, though it is spitting snow out there at the moment. But there isn't a lot of snow on the ground, and, well, figured I'd uh, get out for a couple days and clear my head. But also giving me an opportunity to uh, update you on what's going on here. So as I said, he was a special cat. He was a great cat, in fact. Uh, I'm not going to say he was the greatest cat, because everybody's going to say their cat's the greatest cat. And, Quite frankly, nobody would be wrong about that. <laughs> but uh, he was definitely a special cat. Uh, I was bonded close to him, and he was uh, he was interesting. Even the vet said he was a strange cat. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, I was initially introduced to him on uh, May 30th of uh, 2013. When I got a there's a there was a group in my town. Uh, called the Stoneham Cat Society, and they, they, they pretty much wound down stuff now because the people who were working for the organization had bigger and better projects they wanted to move on to and stuff like that, so. But uh, back then, uh, they were around there, and I helped them out, uh, raise funds for them, things like that, use my Christmas display to drive donations to them, that sort of stuff, and I got some uh, good stuff for them. And uh, I had uh, I had another cat at the time. His name was Bonk, and he was a good cat. But he needed a companion, and I had told them that uh, I was looking for a companion for him at some point. And so one day I got an email on May thirtieth, twenty thirteen, just titled "Beautiful Cat." And in that email was this picture here. And they said uh, he was a Maine Coon mix, and about four years old, and as a thanks for all the help raising funds for them, I can have them if I want. And uh, this is the uh, when the Cat Society was starting to wind down their operations, and they uh, let's see, they didn't really have all the network of foster homes and things like that anymore. And and this particular cat was a little bit uh, uh, sh well, very shy, a little antisocial, and needed some socialization with people and 
they didn't have the facilities to do that, and if I didn't take them in, they would probably have to release them back out in the wild again. And I wasn't going to let that happen. So, of course, I I, I said yes and <laughs> brought them home. Uh, maybe a companion for my uh, other cat, Blanc. And, yeah, I figured, well, we're getting into June here. Bonk is, we, we've got this nice big enclosed porch with lots of big windows, and that's where Bonk spent most of his uh, warmer months. So he wasn't coming up into my bedroom to sleep with me or anything at that point in time. So I figured this was a good opportunity there. I'd, I'd just bring uh, bring this other cat up into my bedroom and uh, lock, him, uh, lock him up in there and uh, just keep him in my room for me. In my room with me, excuse me. In my room with me. And... Uh, I also saw uh, in the picture there the just the, the the gray and white fur, and you know me, I love wolves. <laughs> you, you, you sense the theme in all the stuff I do, and well, I I, I named him Fuelan. You know, so it's a name that uh, from a book I had recently read, and uh, it's an Irish name. It meant little wolf. The actual proper pronunciation is Fuelan. But I was pronouncing it Foylin, and that's just the way it's going to be, Foylin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, he was a, he was an interesting cat though, because uh, I brought him home. The idea was I was going to quietly sneak him upstairs into my bedroom with Oblong seeing him, and I had created a couple of hiding spaces for him, where he might like to stay in. And uh, my plan was to bring him quietly up my room, close the door, open the the uh, door to the crate and then quietly sneak out of my room let him uh, settle into the room for a little bit to explore come out of the carrier at his 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 pace that didn't go as planned <laughs> so I I opened uh, opened the crate up and he immediately bolted out of it and not only did he bolt out of it he went over in front of my bedroom door and parked himself so I couldn't open the door so now not only was he locked in my room I was locked in my room with him <laughs> <laughs> and so took me uh, about half an hour or so to finally uh, manage to get out of my uh, bedroom without him scooting out the door behind me and that was uh, <laughs> that was my first introduction to him I actually ended up spending time with him when I wasn't when he was supposed to be just settling into the room and getting used to his surroundings without anybody else around but Anyway, I got got out of the room, let him settle into the room then. And I came back uh, an hour or so later to see if I could figure out where he went off to hide. And He didn't go into any of the hiding spaces that I had created for him. Typical cat thing. <laughs> Instead, uh, I had also stupidly left my uh, closet open a little bit. And um, didn't even think about it. And that's where I found him, in with all the junk that uh, <laughs> I hoard in my closet. And, um, yeah, he became my little closet monster after that. Because he stayed in that closet for over a month. He would only uh, sneak out to uh, get some food, get a drink, and use the litter box, and then go back into the closet again. So he was my little closet monster. Even He'd only come out, in the, out when, uh, when nobody else was in the room. and He started coming out while I was sleeping at night, too, so... I got the idea then to start bringing up his dinners at... at, at, at at dinner time and put his food down then I climb right up into my bed and pretend that I was sleeping with my back turned to him I did have a little camera a surveillance camera set up so I could watch him so I had my phone in front of me watching the uh, video on the phone and yeah, while he <laughs> while he thought I was sleeping if I moved any he'd bolt back into the closet again but as long as I pretended I was sleeping he'd come out he'd look up at me and then he'd eat and things like that so that worked that worked for a while uh, Try to get him used to my presence and that. And then one day there was a there was a change. And it was interesting. I was heading up to my bedroom to do my normal routine. Pretend I was sleeping in the bed and everything. Put his dinner down. I come in the room with the dinner. Instead of in the uh, closet. He's right there in the middle of the floor. Looking at me. And he starts a meow. And then a hiss. And then a meow. And a hiss. <laughs> and he did this uh, <laughs> while walking towards me. He, he meow, hiss, meow, hiss, meow, hiss. It was really strange. I've never seen that before. And it was the last time I ever heard him hiss, too. The, the, the rest of the time I had him with me. 
But that was a turning point because he put I put the food down for him, and he started eating the food immediately. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, big, big change at that point in time. And uh, he, he stopped hiding in the closet at that point when I came up in the room. And it didn't take long from that point forward uh, before I uh, got him to start coming out of the room. Because we released, op uh, well, I opened the, started to open the door for him, let him have the a run of the upstairs. Box still had no idea there was another cat in the house. It wasn't until I was uh, had cleaned the litter box at uh, Foyland's litter box and brought the uh, the uh, bucket of used litter through the uh, house there right by him that he got a whiff of the other cat. He realized there was another cat in the house. <laughs> uh, well, it took him over over a month before he realized that. And one day I had Foyland out of out of my bedroom and in in another room upstairs, and I brought Bonk upstairs and let him sniff around and uh, get some of Foyland smells. So and uh, vice versa and. They didn't. They they had no major problems. They they never they they got along almost right away as soon as they met. So that was great. They 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 were a couple of buddies. They played all the time, and that was good. Took a took a while to get Foyland to come down the stairs though. After this, yeah, I know. I'm I'm deviating all over the place. My mind is just all over the place with this. So hopefully the story's making sense here to you. <laughs> but uh, took a while to get Foyland to actually come downstairs to be with the rest of the family. Uh, he'd, he'd sit up at the top of the stairs cautiously, but I I could come up near him, but nobody else could. But I'd start sneaking treats down the stairs. He'd come down the stairs, eat the treats, and run back up again. But eventually we worked our way through it and got him downstairs. And Once uh, once he opened up, he, he became a, a fantastic cat. He, he was the only lap cat I ever had. And uh, <laughs> of the four cats I've had, I've still got one more cat now, Poppy. She's by herself now, unfortunately, but but uh, he was the only lap cat I ever had. And uh, in fact, uh, when I come home from these trips here, uh, he'd be waiting for me, and I'd have to sit down on the floor with him, and he'd climb up my lap and purr at me, and things like that. Sometimes he'd be mad at me too for leaving him for several days, and I'd he'd take him and take him an hour or so <laughs> before he came around. But then there's the lap cat again, back in my lap. So the same thing happened when I was working too. He would. Uh, I would come home and <laughs> from work. I had a, I had a, a a contracting IT job in Boston for a while there, and I'd come home and from work and immediately have to, as soon as I came in the house, have to sit down on the floor and have a cat in my lap for 15 minutes or so, almost every day. And there was times that uh, not only would he sit in my lap, sometimes he'd have to walk walk circles around me. It was kind of funny, rubbing up against me and walking circles, meowing and purring and. <laughs> It was awesome. Uh, he was definitely a lover. And uh, he was a player, too. Uh, he, he definitely uh, definitely loved playing. Uh, in fact, to him, everything was a toy. Some of his favorite toys included a paint stirring stick. Yes, just a wooden paint stirring stick. Uh, a tent stake. And a driveway marker. Yes, one of those long orange sticks you know, on the driveway there. And I'd tap it around on the floor and he'd attack it. He also loved tape measures and <laughs> other things that were not intended to be cat toys. He loved those things. So, uh, kind of <laughs> kind of odd. But uh, He also, of course, loved regular cat toys, particularly the ones that uh, d had dangly things on it where it was a, at the other end was attached to my hand. So, dangly feathers, that sort of stuff. He loved that stuff. Loved strings, chasing strings across the house. Eh, not not a big laser pointer fan. He'd watch it a little bit here and there, but uh, he quickly realized he couldn't catch it, so <laughs> he lost interest in the laser pointer. But uh, but yeah, the other things there. Yeah, he he loved playing with that stuff. Uh, and so, and and he 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 enjoyed playing with his brother Bonk. They had these uh, little games there with foil and pounce on Bonk run across the house as fast as he could. Bonk, knowing that uh, he couldn't go very far, just trotted along at a slow pace to catch up to him and then get him. <laughs> it was funny. They they got along great. And unfortunately, uh, two years after Foylan came in the house, uh, Bonk uh, passed away from kidney failure. Seems to be a common theme. I lost three cats to kidney failure now. Uh, but Bonk would... Uh, Bonk got uh, kidney failure, passed away, and so a few months later, I wanted to get another companion for uh, Foylan, so I went to uh, Paws, uh, 
group in uh, Wakefield that rescues cats and uh, basically requested the least adoptable cat. One that needed a lot of work to socialize and that, and that's what I got. I got uh, my cat Poppy. And uh, she she was a project too. I'm not going to get into all the details on her, but it took her over a year <laughs> to come really out to, to talk to people. And uh, she she was a bit of a project cat, and she still hisses at people at random times for no reason. But uh, she, she, she enjoys being petted and that, but for... But Tur and Foylan, they got along pretty good pretty quickly too. And uh, Foylan just had to show that uh, it was his house. And once that happened, they went. They got along after that. And uh, you'd often find them snuggling on the uh, couch or things like that. And mostly, most of the time, I mean, Poppy wasn't much. Isn't much of a player. Uh, she's actually, as you can tell in <laughs> these pictures here, a little obese. So. Uh, we're working on that right now, but uh, it's not easy to get a cat to lose weight. But anyway, so she wasn't much of a player, but uh, she was definitely a snuggler. And Foylan and her spent a lot of time snuggling on the couch, on the, on the porch, uh, other places like that. And they got along just fine. There was a couple of little incidents here and there where Foylan would come up, uh, up to Poppy and start biting her on the back of the neck until she had enough of it and whacked him off the top of the head and hissed at him. And then he'd run off and uh, meow pitifully, like uh, he'd say, "What I do?" <laughs> it's funny too. But uh, yeah, and they had a couple of scratch noses and things like that. But uh, yeah, they they got along just fine though. Uh, but then we got up to this year, and uh, I actually may comment that uh, I, I think uh, on on one of my upcoming videos there, where I was actually back here at Hancock Campground, I commented on uh, being worried about my cat foil and not eating very well and uh, right after I uh, took that last trip there I brought uh, brought foil into the vets and uh, they did a blood work up and then like I said the day before Thanksgiving I got a phone call saying that he had stage 4 kidney failure now he was at the vets back in August and uh, they also said he had uh, Little elevated kidney values, uh, probably just uh, just basically stage one kidney failure, and something I had to keep an eye on. But he went from August uh, to November, just three months, went from stage one to stage four, which is not a good thing. Uh, so they figured he may have had an infection someplace, so they gave him an antibiotic. And he 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 was he's always been a dry food junkie, and at uh, this point he had stopped eating dry food and wasn't eating all that well the canned food but he was eating a lot of treats so that's why I was still getting food into him so uh, so I started giving them subcutaneous fluids fun stuff but I've done that in two previous cats including Bonk and uh, I, I knew how to do it so I started giving subcutaneous fluids and getting that into him and uh, yeah, I got that uh, done, and uh, two weeks later I brought him back to the vets, and they said he gained a little bit of weight, so that was good. So, and he looked a lot better hydrated, so my treatment was starting to work on him. And a couple of weeks later we brought him back again, and he gained a little bit more weight, and they did another blood workup, and he said his blood values had improved slightly, but not great. But, unfortunately, there was definitely something else going on, because shortly after that vet visit he started to tank. And uh, he started having problems eating the treats or eating much of anything, drinking water, that sort of stuff. And that led us up to uh, right after Christmas. And Christmas he actually had a good day. That was his, his probably his peak before the end. He actually did well on Christmas, which is good, as we had a house full of people there. And I didn't really want to be worrying about him. He came down and drank water and <laughs> with people there, which is not something he ever did before. So he came down with other people in the house and everything, which was good. And, uh, shortly after that, though, yeah, he tanked. and uh, Turns out uh, they think he may have had cancer someplace in his body. And we could have done diagnostic tests to find it, but it wouldn't change the outcome. And... <sighs> Sorry. On the... Uh... On the um, uh, 30th, December 30th, Saturday, I woke up to him kind of screaming in pain. 
or meowing painfully. Every time he moved, he was having a hard time uh, getting comfortable, and you could tell he was in pain. He had probably been in this pain for quite some time, but he had been hiding it really well, and I had no idea about it. Till the pain got too great and he couldn't hide it anymore. And, uh... Had to bring him to the vets that day. I called him up, made an appointment, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. They did one more examination on him, and uh, yeah, they found he had fluid in his lungs. He was in a lot of pain, and there was really nothing we could do. It was, it was time to say goodbye. Yeah. <sighs> so, they gave him a, a sedative to uh, calm him down so they could put the catheter in and uh, get ready to uh, do the euthanasia. And... Uh, as he relaxed, he passed on his own. It's going to be hard to get through this end, isn't it? <laughs> uh, he passed with me standing right next to him, patting him quietly. He, I was deeply bonded with him, and I'm going to miss him a lot. And unlike my previous two cats there, uh, uh, that had also died of kidney failure, they were sick for months and slowly going downhill, and I had time to mentally prepare myself for the uh, inevitable loss. And by the time that uh, they went, it was more of a blessing than a curse to see them out of their uh, suffering because they were going downhill pretty quickly. Foyland, I didn't have that, though, and uh, I took this a lot harder than I had at any other cat. And, uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, definitely going to miss him. <sighs> so, now you know the story of my cat, Foylan. Like I said, he was a special cat. So with that, sorry to, uh, bring the channel down. <laughs> uh, this is just how I've been. This is why I haven't done any videos, uh, for the last several weeks. Because I was already pretty depressed over over him, because I I just could tell I, I tell I was going to lose him. Just didn't expect it to be so quick. And uh, yeah, we're just starting to get things back on track again here. So, like I said, I just had to get out of the house. I'm back at Hancock Campground. We're going to get the other videos. I got two other trips there. One out in New York, and then one uh, I, the other rest of the uh, Thanksgiving video there. Uh, when I went up to Hancock Campground the last time in November to do, and then we'll get back to this trip. Which hopefully uh, tomorrow we'll be shooting some uh, snow video. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you for listening to my story about Foylan. <sighs> so now you know his story. And for Foylan, rest in peace, buddy. My little closet monster. My little wolf. Talk to you guys later. Ah. Uh. <laughs>